Keeping it simple and just recording your face with a smartphone or keeping it real and investing into an expensive audio and video hardware and building a complete studio right in your home. This is a question that most content creators are asking in one point or another. No matter what you do, Udemy or YouTube, you're creating educational content or just blogging, you're wondering what is that next piece of hardware that will make my video content significantly better? What is the best way to invest my money? money into my home studio. My name is Yuri Bura. I'm an instructor on Udemy and a content creator for YouTube. And I'm also a hobby videographer. And in this video, I want to share a couple of my tips of building your home studio, no matter what your budget is, 100 bucks or 10,000 bucks. So let's jump right in and start with the simplest possible setup a good old smartphone. So that's pretty much how your ultra minimalistic studio setup looks like. Get any tripod, the cheapest tripod that is possible. You don't need to have fancy tripod because you don't need to support any kind of weight or heavy equipment on top of your tripod. Also, you don't need smooth movements because this one will be fixated in one place. Put your phone that you have. I took the old 6S uh, iPhone and just point your camera at yourself and start talking. Just use the camera of your smartphone. And that's how your video will look and sound like, right? I'm quite happy I'm using natural light and today is the gorgeous day for natural lighting because the light is not too harsh and there is plenty of light coming out of the window as much as I can probably get. It's a bit cloudy day, but well, you will not wait for the perfect feather to record your videos, right? And the next question is going to be how you can improve over this basic setup. What will be the next thing that you can do to make it better? So once you have the super basic setup working, you have a smartphone recording your face and you're using the microphone and camera from the smartphone, which is suboptimal. Of course, you can start building on that, right? So you can improve your studio setup. And the next thing that I would definitely advise you to do is to look at your sound options, because most of the time when you're recording educational videos, people are not looking at your face. They are listening to your explanations for most of the courses. It's not for every course, but for most of the courses, we are talking more than we are showing. Even if you're recording the courses where the most of the content is coming from the screen, like my courses, for example, I'm teaching programming, so 99.9% .9 of the content of my course is screen recordings. But even in this case, you have this narration part where you're telling and explaining things that are happening on the screen. And for this part, the microphone is crucial because most of the time, most of the students will be listening to what you're saying, not really looking at what you're doing. Maybe both, but sound matters much more than the quality of the picture and the quality of the camera. So let's do a very, very quick test here without getting into nitty gritty details of the different microphones so that you can get a feeling of the different kinds of the microphone and which one will work for you. By the way, right now this video is recorded with a Sennheiser lavalier mic, which is a quite nice lavalier mic. And also we have, of course, an option to record audio with our smartphones. So let's see how that will sound. Right now I'm talking to my smartphone and let's see how that sound will look like on the recording. I, I bet it's going to be quite horrible, but still this, this is a starting point to compare against. So, and now I'll take a small compact recorder, which is Zoom H1 and, and I'll try to say something into this recorder. I'll press record button. In this case, you'll pretty much have to put this microphone somewhere relatively close to your face so that it records the reasonable sound. But I'll tell you from my experience for the compact design, for the portability. This is one of the greatest mics to work on the go. I recorded plenty of episodes with this microphone instead of using the microphone from the smartphone or from the computer, which is even worse. Now, depending on how you connect your microphone to your computer, they are coming in two different flavors. First are USB mics. They've got a USB cable. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you right away, but there is a USB cable right out of the microphone. You plug it into your computer and you start the recording, which is great. So microphones from Blue, Blue Yeti, for example, is an example of USB microphone, which is a super easy way to start with a decent quality of sound. It's, it's really good quality of sound. It's not decent, it's good, right? More than enough for Udemy courses or YouTube videos. Most of YouTubers are using 
USB mics, right? However, there is one downside for USB mics, which is this little component that transforms the analog sound into the digital signal is inbuilt into the mic. So it is a part of the mic and it's a part of the price of the mic, right? So it is not always the highest possible and the greatest possible quality. And besides, if you want to have this nice control over the sound of your microphone, over the signal, how it's pre-processed, how it's amplified and how it's finally getting into the recording software, then you probably go with a proper XLR mics. Now, the problem with these mics, like the one that I'm having in my hand, is that you cannot just take this microphone and connect it to computer. If I, I'll try to show you guys here, if you see, this is the kind of connector that the XLR microphone has. It's like three pin connector that is made for audio hardware, not for your computer. It doesn't have USB out. So in order to connect something like this, which is a Boyer Dynamic mic, to your computer, you need something that is called an audio interface. That is adding a little bit extra to your budget. It's not very pricey. It's around 100, 150 bucks for a decent interface. But then it allows you to take the microphone, plug it into this interface, connect the interface through Thunderbolt or USB to your computer, and then the microphone will be visible like a regular sound card, regular microphone, right? And so you can record it in your software. It requires you to be a little bit more tech savvy and to have another piece of hardware on your desk, but trust me, the resulting sound is usually worth it. Now guys, let me show you a quick demo. Right now I plugged my microphone into my audio interface. Let me turn on that interface. Let me start my computer and I'll show you how this mic sounds. Right now the mic that is connected to that audio interface is Neumann TLM 102, which is a very, very, very decent microphone for, for the sake of Udemy courses. So now let's see how it sounds. Now, as you can probably tell, this mic is totally different from the other mics that we used in this video. This is Neumann TLM 102 microphone, which is a condenser mic, and we are capturing the sound with the help of Focusrite external interface. This microphone helps you to capture the subtle nuances of your voice and really helps to preserve that depth of the sound. So I really love that mic. I don't really think that for the sake of home studio, you need anything better than this kind of a microphone. Now that we sorted out the sound, what should be the next best investment to improve your studio? And you're now probably thinking, well, it's time to get some real camera, some DSLR with some beautiful big lens, right? And in my view, this is not yet, not yet the best place to put your money into. And the next best place is light. And now you might be thinking like, light? Why would I pay for light? I've got windows in my house and there's plenty of free light coming out of the windows. Why would I buy light? So let me quickly explain you a couple of interesting facts about the lighting in the studio. So let's talk about lights, shall we? Here's the day when I'm shooting this video. It's snowy right now in Switzerland and I don't see skies. It's all covered with the dense clouds. And actually, this light is not very bad for videos for one reason. It's very, very consistent. On the other hand, if you have a sunny day and the sun is coming and going behind the clouds, the temperature of the light and the intensity of the light will jump wildly during your recording. So it takes your time and it takes time away from the video production. So let's make a very quick experiment. Here's my camera recording with a natural light coming out of the window. Right now I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll try to make it slightly better and I'll turn on the regular light, not a video light, light just regular light in the room. So it's getting slightly better, but now light is from the top. It's not nice, it's yellow, and it doesn't really give you the picture quality that you want. And now let's turn on the video lights. So here's a totally different picture that you see. Here's the bright YouTube look that you're striving for. And buying this kind of light will improve your video quality much better than buying a huge camera with a huge lens. Choosing the right lights can be a bit tricky because they are very different in terms of their quality and their price as well. Well, pretty much like anything else. 
right? So lights can range from around 100 bucks per unit to around 1000 and 3 400 that's the most expensive that I reasonably would put in my studio, right? So what I would recommend you to do is before buying any kind of light, go to your rental shop and rent out the lights that you think are reasonable for your studio setup. Then play with these lights, try to set it up, try to see if you're happy with the picture quality. And once you're happy, you will know exactly what kind of lights you need. Just don't buy them straight away and hope that they will work. They are different. Try them hands-on first. And finally, let's talk about cameras. So once you decided to get rid of your smartphone as a recorder and you want to invest into a proper camera, which one should you get? Well, there are a few things to consider. Firstly, you don't really need that beautiful cinematic cameras or DSLR to record the typical Udemy, typical YouTube videos. Unless you want to be creative, unless you want to take that camera with you to vacation, to holidays, and take a few pictures of your family or a few videos of your family, do not invest into large DSLRs, right? Firstly, you're buying separately the body and the lenses that is contributing to the overall price of the unit. Secondly, it is quite heavy. So these kinds of cameras are really nice if videography or photography is your hobby like it is for me. But if your goal is to just shoot professional looking videos, then they are overkill. They are too heavy, they are too expensive for what you want them to do. A much better choice would be to go with a compact and light camcorder, like the one that I've got right here, which is Canon Ligria HF-G25. It is not only compact and light, it's also giving you a great picture quality, and in addition, it gives you the tools in the camcorder to help you with videos, like focus assist tools, like zebra tools, that shows you the parts of the pictures that are overexposed. If you're going with DSLR like this Canon, this is primarily made for photography, right? So it doesn't have the video editing tools, unless, of course, you want to go further and install some custom firmware like Magic Lantern that actually adds the ability to shoot decent videos with the uh, photo cameras. But of course, if all you do is shooting video like this one that I've got right here, right, shooting your face, talking to a camera, you don't need all this stuff. And if you guys are wondering what is the camera that I shot this video is, here it is. It is Canon C100, amazing camera, which is a complete overkill nevertheless for Udemy or YouTube videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this video really helps you to start thinking in a little bit more structural way about your studio setup, right? Just break it down into the components and think which one is the most important for your students or for your YouTube audience. It's most likely gonna be sound. Unless you're doing some very specific, very interesting, bright and vivid and creative videos, it is gonna be a sound, right? So invest into sound afterwards, invest into lighting into your home studio, invest into the acoustic treatment of your home studio and only after afterwards invest into video. Because honestly that video equipment is quite expensive and unless your content is super video centric, super video specific, it will not give you a huge improvement in the overall results of your video production compared to the other components of your studio. So share the details and the configuration of your studio setup in the comments and let me know what do you think is the most important component of your studio setup.